Matthew chapter number 12, and we're going to start reading in verse number 9. It says, When he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had, which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days, that they might accuse him? And he, saith, and he said unto them, What man shall there be among you, that shall have one sheep, and it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will not lay hold on it, and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for the reading of your word. Lord, thank you again for allowing us to be here tonight. Lord, I ask you just be with what you've laid upon my heart to preach. Lord, help me convey it here to your people the same way you gave it to me. Lord, it can be a help and an encouragement to each and every one of us here. Lord, I ask you just help there be anybody that's lost. Lord, that uh, help them see their need for salvation before it's too late. Lord, no, uh, to the Christian here, Lord, we just ask you just help give them strength tonight. Lord, and help each and every one of us walk out of here tonight closer to you than what we was when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at is just in verse number uh, uh, 10 as we see the attitude that they have here towards others. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered and asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? Uh, you know, they, they didn't care that this man had a withered hand. They didn't care what kind of condition he was in. They were more worried about, the Pharisees were more worried about sticking to their religious beliefs and their religious customs, so to speak. Uh, there's too many times that we get to where we look down our nose at others, uh, maybe not even meaning to. You know, I did the devotion, uh, I believe it was this past Monday, uh, talking about uh, seeking Jesus. You can look out and see a lost and dying world and see that, lock, that, that look of lost in their face they're seeking something. Who are we to decide? Well, they're not seeking Jesus. They're seeking their next high. They're seeking their next drink. They're seeking their next way to spend money or whatever it may be and not being willing to share the gospel with them. You know, these, these Pharisees, they didn't care about what was wrong with that man. They were too worried about whatever their religious customs were. You know, how many times are we, uh, maybe we might see somebody come into church and ain't dressed the way we think they should be dressed. Well, what, what difference does it make how they're dressed? Our desire should be them to come in and see them get help. It doesn't matter what they look like, where they come from, what they may have been through. Our desire should be to see them get help. See, that wasn't their concern. They was more worried about with what day it was. And the reason that they was more worried about it is because they looked to accuse Jesus, as we see in verse number 10. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Isn't it amazing how we are so quick to accuse God? Oh, I wouldn't do such a thing. Really? How many times we have go wrong? Why would God let this happen to me? Why would God let that happen to so-and-so? I've done everything I possibly can, living the life I'm supposed to live. Why would God allow this to come in to my life? Well, why wouldn't he? Sure. You know, as I shared that one night uh, in a book I was reading here a while back, and somebody asked uh, 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 somebody over in England years ago about why would, and I can't remember now what it was, why would he allow Judas to follow? I don't remember now what the question was, but he's like, why, why would he pick me? Why would he choose me? You know, you think of everything Jesus does for him, why, would it, why do we have to question and accuse God of anything when something bad happens in our life? So we see uh, the attitude towards others. We see the accusing. And in verse number 11, we see the, the question that's asked. He says, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and have fallen to a pit on the Sabbath day? Will he not lay hold of it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? He just asked them, the absolute, this man is worth more than that sheep, but if any of you was to have a sheep fall in a pit today, you would go out and get it out. But he is worth a whole lot more. What are those lives and those souls worth to us as we look out into this world? What is it worth to us? How much are we willing to sacrifice or how much are we willing to give to see the lost come in and get saved? We're always quick to say we would do certain things. I often wonder, we're always quick, boy, we want to see revival break out. We want to see this happen. How much are we willing to truly sacrifice to see those people get saved? Amen. If pastor called for uh, an all-night prayer meeting, would we be willing to come and stay all night? Now, I know some can't, physically can't do it. I get that. But how many of us could that just wouldn't? We do have a revival. He announced revival uh, uh, for that week, uh, the, the, uh, that first, second weekend in October, and, and we're excited and we look forward to that meeting. What happens on Sunday night? He gets up and he says, you know what, we're going to extend this to the rest of this week. 
I know there's going to be some going to be shout, say, glory, amen, we're looking forward to it. And we'll be here every night. But what if happened that following Sunday, he says we're going to go another week? Are we going to have that same excitement? Yeah. Why not? Why not? I remember one time us extending a meeting it going for a couple weeks that I can remember since I've been here. That was in the old building, I do believe. We need that again. But see, too many times we say with our words that we would do that, but when it comes down to it, uh, I just got things I need to get done. What's more important than lost souls? What's more important than seeing how many people do we have? Uh, you know, uh, you, you said and you can look at the prayer request sheet and 75% of it tonight was praying for lost loved ones and lost children and lost friends and lost co-workers. Well, it's not about just coming here and just spouting that off to make us sound good. How serious are we about those things? We see the absolute in verses 11 through 13. We see the anger, though, in verse number 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him how they might destroy him. Isn't it funny? Isn't it something that when we, we, they'll never do that in plain sight, Brother Phil? Sure. They'll never seek to, to destroy somebody in plain sight. You're not going to have anybody stand up at the pulpit and say how they want to get rid of the preacher, how they want to get rid of this or get rid of that. They always want to do things behind closed doors. So they went out and held a council against him how they might destroy him. But see, Jesus was smarter than them. So in verse number 15, we see him go away. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. All those that followed him. If they followed him, that meant they came there. They was there. They were in the synagogue with him. They came for a reason. I don't know what that reason was. Maybe they came to hear somebody preach. Maybe they just all came to get healed. That's why they followed him out. They all had something they needed to be healed of. And they had heard from somewhere before that this man Jesus could heal them if they could just get to him. That's right. But whatever it was, they made sure they followed him and they got what they came for. And that's what I want to preach tonight. You'll get what you come for. So what did you come here for tonight? What did you come here for this evening? Now, we know that Wednesday night is typically called prayer meeting. So, if you come to pray tonight, you can pray. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 6 tells us, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. So, absolutely, that's what we come for tonight is to have prayer meeting. We come and we, we give our requests and we give our requests to God and we pray for those things. We can have that. But did we come to give our request because we want to uh, uh, see those lost people get saved? Yeah. Did we come with prayer for our uh, uh, missionaries because we want to see them uh, get help? Yeah. Or did we come, and I looked, and I tried to find this, and I couldn't find one. I started to make one. Or do we come, and we just almost have a scroll of things to roll out? God, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this, I want this, I want this, and that's why we come. Thinking, if I come to church on a Wednesday night... I interrupt my life in the middle of the week and go out after I've worked hard all day and if I'm willing to go and tell God everything that I need, He'll meet those needs. Is that our attitude when it comes to why we came tonight to pray? Or, number two, I'm going to slow down. See, I get nervous. Let me get going real fast. Can I tell you a funny story? I told that, that preacher that he wants me to come and fill in for him. I asked him, uh, when I called and talked to him, and I asked him, I said, what time do you typically get out? I said, now granted, we believe, you know, you preach and whatever time you get out, that's when you get out. Let God move in a service, whatever he does. I said, now I usually don't have a problem standing behind a pulpit. I said, at jail, I can go a little long. I said, but standing behind a pulpit, I said, I get too nervous. I said, he goes, oh, you'll be preaching by probably 20 after 11. I was like, oh, then we'll be done well before 12. He said, now keep in mind, I got to come back here and preach too. I don't, don't, don't spoil him. I was like, uh, you're going to get him spoiled probably if we're going to be preaching that quick. But number two... Did we come tonight to pray? Did we come to participate? In Psalms chapter 84 and verse number 4, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, and they will be still praising thee, Selah. Did you come to participate tonight? Sure. How many times does our pastor ask, especially on a Sunday evening, anybody got anything you want to brag about? And it happened this past Sunday night. And we all just kind of sat there, looking around. Now, maybe it's just me. This, this could just be, you know, the devil getting into my head. Do you look around and think, how many people don't raise their hand because they're afraid? Well, I don't want, if I testify, and then that's going to make Brother Jordan think of something, he's going to raise his hand. And then Sister Pam's going to think of something, she's going to raise her hand. And then this person's going to think of something. And before you know it, we're going to be here till all hours of the night. And maybe that's just the way I think. It could just be me, the devil getting in my head, Brother Phil. I don't know why. 
But too many times we aren't willing to participate when it comes to things of God. And I thought about this, and I'm not trying to throw off, look, I, I go to games, and, and part of the reason I say all the time why I don't watch sports as much as I used to has nothing to do with not being a sports fan. I'm getting too old and mean, and I get too mad watching officiating. And how often are we so quick sitting in front of the TV, or we'll go watch our little kids, and we got these you know, middle-aged men that were hanging on to every little ounce of athletic prowess we have by trying to officiate these little kids, and we'll jump up, you idiot, did you not see him hold my kid? Did you not see him knock my son down or knock my daughter down? How can you not see that? Boy, we'll get right up and scream and yell at them. But put us in a church service, and we'll just say here. How many of us are willing to get up and sing? I asked if anybody had a song. Had two people. I'd never heard Brother Charlie sing before. Man, that was good. I appreciate that. That was a blessing. How much you think that's going to help us, little Joseph, too? No dad got up and sang with me. I forgot all about it. We talked about singing uh, uh, for, I can't say that. Just in case Brother Doug goes back and listens, to this, I can't say something I was about to say. But I was talking here a while back, and Caitlin talked about that I got up and sang with her on a Wednesday morning, first time she sang Blessings. I'm like, I did? And we still had some Wednesday morning services after that? That's amazing. Like, maybe there was nobody here that morning. Maybe I was preaching, it was just me and her. Maybe that's what it was. That's why we got up and sang. But did we come to participate tonight? Amen. Or did we just come to blow in and blow out and go through the motions? We should want to praise Him. We should want, whether it be in song, whether it be raise our hand, whether it be shouting amen, but we should come to participate and get in. Otherwise, why do we come? Sure. Really, why do we come? We don't go to a ball game just to sit there and watch and do nothing. Right. We'll cheer. We'll yell at the referee. We'll yell at the umpire. We'll cheer for our team. We'll boo the other team. Or if you're at a Bengals game, you're going to boo your home team, whatever it may be. <laughs> but we'll participate in those things. I can't sit and watch a stupid... Man, my wife has me. I don't know what she, how she found the show, but she flipped this show on here back when before everything ended, this NCIS. And we got hooked on it, and unfortunately, Netflix has all however many seasons there are. So most nights, we have to watch it. It's a stupid TV show. I don't, that's why I don't like watching TV, because I don't want to watch it, Brother Phil. And I'll sit there, and there was one here, that I don't know when it was, it was a couple weeks I'm watching, and I'm laying there in bed, and he gets to part, and I jump up and go sit in the chair. I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, it's a stupid TV show. But we'll participate in that. We'll get all into that, all involved in it, and we'll come to church, and we'll hear the pastor preach, or we'll hear the preacher preach, and we can get to the parking lot and say, what do you preach on? Uh, and you'll give the answer that Bella would. Jesus? Okay. What about Jesus? God, he loves you, what about it? We'll forget by the time we get out of there. Why? Because we don't participate. We don't take an active participation in what's going on. We just sit there and listen and let it go in one ear and out the other, just like our kids was. Right. Why did you come tonight? You'll get what you come for. Did you come to pray? Did you come to participate? Did you come for preaching? In Acts chapter number 20, and see, here's what I mean by preaching. Acts chapter number 20, verses 7 through 9, and it says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain man named um, Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. How many of you are falling over dead if I preach till midnight tonight? <laughs> I will, first off. But do we, how, do we come for preaching? Because I'm convinced well, if we come for preaching, we don't care how long it goes. I love those services when the preacher gets up to preaching and you just get involved in service. Next thing you know, you look down and he's been up there preaching for an hour and a half. And you're like, man, I had no idea it was already 1 o'clock on a Sunday morning or whatever it may be. Yeah. That's the best, those are the best services. Right. Look, I, I, said, I, I said about being a little long-winded at jail. A couple Sunday mornings ago, I believe, I was in jail with Sister Noreen, and I was preaching, and I got through, I think it was my first or second point, I think it was even in my introduction. And I told her, I looked at my watch, and it was like 20 till 10. And that was supposed to be the long point. You know, that was going to be the long point I had. Everything else was going to go through quick. And I looked at Miss Noreen, did I not? And I told her, I said, we'll make it in time for Sunday school this morning. I got done, I looked down, it was 1025. I was like, wow, how did that happen? But I like that when you get, you get involved. But too many times, we don't come for preaching. We just come to hear just maybe a little sermon or a little message. 
And once it gets past whatever time we think it's supposed to be, we start getting restless. Right. Well, is he going to get done? How long are we going to be here? We're not going to be here much longer, are we? I'd, I'd already had plans on what I was going to do tonight. I put off homework for my kids because I knew Brother Joss was preaching tonight, and we'd be out by 8 o'clock. So now he's got to hurry up because I don't know how much longer he's going to go, and we got homework to go home and finish. Or you come on Sunday, well, we, I put a ham in the oven because I knew Brother Josh was preaching. Now we'd be out by noon, and if I don't get home, that ham's going to burn. Do we really come for preaching? Do we care about how long we're there for? Or do we just come to hear a little fluffy message to tickle our ears? Why did you come? You'll get what you come for. That man, he might have came at one point, but then he fell asleep, he got bored with it. I'm convinced if we come for preaching, we're not going to get bored with it. Regardless, if it's stepping on our toes, if it's fluffing us up, regardless of what it is, we're going to enjoy it. You'll get what you come for. Did you come to provide help or to promote yourself? Luke chapter number 18 and verses 10 through 14, we've all heard this read. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as the other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as the publican. Fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down into his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Do we come to provide help or to promote ourselves? You think, well, what do you mean? Did you come to get in? Do you make a, a copy of the prayer request? You know, it's amazing how just little things people pick up on. We walk in here tonight, and we're getting ready, and, and I'm standing back here talking to Brother Randy, and, and Bella comes up and gets the mic and brings it to me, and she goes out, and she's like, I'm going to get paper. I said, we get paper. She goes, for you to write prayer on? She knows I get a piece of paper. I said, we already got that. I already had to write down some announcements, so I'd be prepared. But do we write those things down? Do we take into account those things we need to pray for? What about the missionaries? How often do we pray for them? Do we, that might be the best help we can provide is praying for somebody. Amen. Or we want to promote ourselves. Well, how do you mean promoting himself? I'm a church. When was the last time you walked up to somebody and said, hey, where was you Wednesday night? I missed you. Just so you can let them know that you was here. Right. You know, it amazes me. I've been to church before where you have, three, you know, you've not seen somebody in a month and it would snow a couple inches and they're at church and the first thing you want to do is the next service run. Where was you at last week? I was here. Snow didn't keep me away. No, but nice weather kept you away for the month beforehand. Why do we come tonight? To provide help or to promote ourselves? Sure. We should come any point in time to provide help. You have no clue. We've heard our pastor say it. You have no idea the hurt hidden behind the smiles when we walk in here each and every service. We have no idea what people are going through. Right. No clue what they're facing. No clue. And we should, it should be our desire to come and provide help. It might be a simple hug you give somebody. It might just be a simple, I'm praying for you. You have no idea what it can do to help them. The last thing that you'll get what you come for. I'm not done though, okay? Don't get too excited. Did you come to be picked up or revived? Psalms 85, 6. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Do you come for that reason? Do you come to church each and every time, God help me, pick me up, revive me, rejuvenate me, give me that spark that Joseph just sang about that I can go out and be that lighthouse and be that fire for you? God, just, just ignite that spark because that's what it says. All it takes is a little spark. We have no idea what God can do outside these walls with the spark if we would just catch that little spark on the inside. You'll get what you come for. If you come, whatever you come for tonight, that's what you're going to get. Because you're going to come too often. We have to come. We're going to come. We're going to get what we come for because of our preconceived motions. See, if you, you want to come and get help and want to come and get preaching, you have to come with no preconceived notions on what's going to happen. Amen. We can't come in on Sunday thinking, well, here's what's going to happen. We're going to sing a song, and he's going to give announcements, and then the choir is going to sing a song or two, and then so we're going to have a special or two, and then he's going to preach, and we're going to be out of here. Mm. Too many times that's we, we come in and we think that's how it's got to go. I remember I we used to go, I grew up going to a church, that that's what the bulletin told you. It told you so-and-so was going to sing this song, and so-and-so was going to sing this song, and then the, uh, 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 the congregational song was going to be this, 
And this was going to be the title of the preacher's message. I used to always think it was amazing. I would sit in Sunday school class and it's like, wow, isn't it cool, Brother Clint? The Sunday school lesson went right along with the message. Until I found out that was all planned. They told them all what to preach and sing and, and teach and everything anyway. Like, well, what's the point of all that? That's how we are. We think we know who's going to pray. We think we come in and know who's going to sing. And we come in with all these preconceived notions about what's going to happen. How many of you walked in, not this past Sunday morning, but the Sunday morning before that, thinking God was going to show up and Brother Doug wasn't even going to preach? We ne never, never crossed our minds. Probably not. We never thought that Brother Doug would just allow God to show up on a Sunday morning and not even preach on a Sunday morning. Right. See, we come in already preconceived. Oh, Brother, Brother Doug's going to preach. It's a Sunday morning service. Well, he's not going to just let God show up, really. He's told us before. He has no ego. He don't care. That should be our right. attitude. God, we just want to see you show up. God, if you show up in the congregational song, if you show up in the special singing, if you show up in Sunday school and break out, we just want to see you show up, God. Amen. Not coming in with any preconceived notions. And the last thing is we must come prepared. In 2 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 14, And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. And I understand that's talking about a king. But how many times would we come in and I'll tell myself, Brother Phil, as I said, maybe I'm the only one that has those thoughts. Maybe as there's times I'm not prepared the way I should be. But how many times have we come in and we've not prepared our heart would cause us to do evil? And see, we think of evil as something just wicked. It might not be something wicked. It could be something as simple as we're just not focused the way we need to be. We say something wrong to somebody, something offensive to somebody uh, that we had no business saying. We do something that we shouldn't do or whatever it may be. We're not as focused as the way we should be because we've not prepared our hearts for the service. How serious do we take it? I'm afraid that we've gotten to a point that we just blow in and blow out on Sunday and on Wednesday because we think that's what we're supposed to do. The last two Sunday mornings, we've been fortunate and blessed to see Sister May here. How often do you think she would love to have the ability that we have to be able to come in every single service that we take for granted? How many times do we get up on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night and we go to church just because that's what I do? I get up on Sunday morning, get ready and go to jail because that's, that's what I do. I love going, but how prepared are we? How much have we truly prayed for our pastor? Or whoever is going to be preaching. How many times have we truly prayed for our Sunday school teacher? That, that they've, they've spent all the time studying. That God give them remembrance to what they've studied. And God just use them as a vessel to break revival out. Instead of what well, we're going to church today because that's what we do. We go to church on Sundays. We go to church on Wednesdays. How often do we truly come prepared? How much thought do we give the service up until, what, an hour before? Maybe even the night before. Sure. How many times are we truly have our hearts prepared? You know, I was thinking about this a couple weeks ago, and it, it's been on my mind a lot lately, and I've not approached the pastor about it. I've just not gotten complete peace about it. How many of us have ever gone to the pastor and asked him and says, Hey, you know, I just I really feel this burden, and I want, I want God to show up in our services. I'm going to be here on Saturday night. Do you have anybody that can let me in church? I just want to come in at 8 o'clock and just pray. Just God to bless this place the night before and be prepared. You know, we used to have Saturday night prayer meetings, and we would come and to different times, and we would pray, and, and sometimes we would spend a little bit of time here. And I remember, what, you know, brother, brother Doug talking about not having an ego. I remember one of the best ones we ever had was, was Brother Zach over here somewhere praying, and God just showed up in the middle of that one night. And not big Zach like he is now. This was when brother, you know, Zach was this tall. You know, he wasn't taller than me, you know. How prepared are we? How prepared do we come in? We'll get what we come for. If you want to come in and you want to blow in and blow out to feel better about yourself, you're going to do it. Because you're already going to have that preconceived notion. Well, I went to church today. I did what I was supposed to do. Good for me. It's not about going to church. It's about having that relationship with God and coming and prepared to see God do something. Sure. I often wonder this. I, I believe with all my heart, I'm not saying that I don't, but I'm trying to think of the right words I want to say. 
How often has our pastor talked about when he grew up going to church, if nobody got saved, people would hit the altar asking God, was it me? Was it me? Now, we are quick to pray on Sunday night. We are quick to pray. Well, we had so many visitors, and if God gave our pastor that message this morning that somebody in here was lost and it had to be for them, and they walked out here and God prayed, you just do something for them. How many times, how many of us are willing on that Sunday morning to hit the altar and pray for them, and we're not leaving? If, pastor, if, if God lays it on pastor's heart to dismiss the service, he can dismiss the service, and I'm going to stay here and I'm going to pray for those people. See, we don't come for that. We come to get our we come to get our fix, you know. We come to get our little our church service out of the way, and we heard a little preaching, heard a little singing. It made us feel better about ourselves. It it, it helped us a little bit that day, and that's what we came for. Or do we come really get serious to really see God move in and do something? Do we truly want to see? We have it, you know, whatever it is now, three weeks away. Do we truly want to see revival break out? You know something I have. I'm afraid that we already have a preconceived notion about what that weekend's going to be. What Brother Greg will preach, how long he'll preach, who will sing that weekend, what Sunday night will... I didn't go to the boat last time, so I don't... I, maybe we might already have preconceived notions of what's going to happen on the boat. I have no idea. I didn't get to go last time. I'm looking forward to it. Or do we come in prepared for what God has for us? Well, how will you come Sunday? What will you come Sunday for? Will you come to see God truly show up and do something? Will you come in prepared to see God do something? Or will you come in with preconceived notions already of what's going to happen? See, those people that showed up in the synagogue, they could have stayed right there. They could have stayed right there and not got what they come for. Yeah. We came to see Jesus. He's leaving. We're going with him. Sure. If we come to see Jesus on, on Sunday, we'll see him. It doesn't matter what the preacher preaches. doesn't matter who sings what. We come to see him, we'll see him. He'll show up. He can preach. I could stand up here on Sunday and preach a salvation message from beginning to end, and you could have been saved for 40 years. But if you come to get something from God, you'll get something out of that message, I promise you. I've seen it happen before. Or do we just come with preconceived notions of, yeah, this is what's going to happen, and that's what it's going to be. I ask Miss uh, Renee if you would come get us a verse of invitation. I ask you again tonight, what would you come? You'll get what you come for, so what did you come for tonight? What are you coming for on Sunday? Because you feel like you have to, because you just that's just what you do, or are you coming to truly see God move and do something in our services? As they get a song, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that we can show up. Lord, looking to hear from heaven, Lord, and looking to see you show up. Lord, we just ask that you just uh, uh, deal with hearts here tonight. Lord, we just ask in preparation for Sunday, not only here, but in all those churches across the uh, area that are preaching your true word. Lord, you just show up and see revival break out. Maybe this evening in South Carolina or here or wherever it may be. Lord, just see you show up and do something we've never seen before. And speak to hearts now during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.